Good day, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Q2 FY23 Earnings Conference Call of Geojet Financial Services. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the only mode, and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchtone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Satish Menon, Executive Director. Thank you, and over to you, sir. Thank you, Michelle, and a very warm good evening to everyone, and welcome to this Geojit Financial Services Quarter Two Investment Call. In this call, uh, we have uh, Mr. C. J. George. Managing Director, myself, Executive Director, John George, Executive Director, and Ms. Vinny Nair, CFO of the company, and Ms. Johnson, Company Secretary. Before we open into Q and A, I'll just take you through the broad numbers of quarter two. Then we can open for Q and A. In terms of total income uh, for the quarter two. September ended FY 22-23. We have done 112.2 crores, which is 10% higher than the June quarter and 12% lower than the same quarter last year. In terms of total expenses, it is at 81.08 crores, which is 10% higher than the June quarter and 9% higher from the same quarter last year. In terms of distribution of revenue, brokerage and brokerage-related activities, the revenue was 75.42 crores, which is 8% up from the June quarter and 16% down from the previous year. In terms of revenue from the financial product distribution, we have done 23.22 crores, which is 23% up from the June quarter and 18% up from the previous year. Financial product dis distribution is split into two portions primarily. Mutual fund, which is 17.95 crores, up 11% and 18%. And insurance income of 4.66 crores, which is up 129% from the June quarter and 32% from the previous year. Profit after tax of 24.23 crores, which is 10% up from the June quarter and a regrowth of 40% from the same period last year. In terms of new clients, we added 23,871 clients, that is 17% up from the June uh, quarter and 19% up from the same period, period last year. Over the last 12 months, so we have opened 29 new offices, primarily in the state of Kerala and some in Tamil Nadu. Instead of brokerage, the cash market brokerage is 76%. And the features and options brokerage is 24% the total brokerage. Yield in the cash side has uh, remained healthily steady at uh, 0.16 percentage. Delivery brokerage, which is the main strength area of Geojit, contributes 70% of the total brokerage. In terms of mutual fund clients, so the holding clients, we have 2,31,694 clients, which is up 6% Y on Y. We had a net inflow of 151 crores in mutual fund last quarter, and an AEM of 8171 crores in mutual fund, which is up 8% year on year and 13% quarter on quarter. This is the opening remarks. Michelle, now we can open for Q&A. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone phone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. You may press star and one to ask a question. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star N1 now.
The first question is from the line of Varun Bang from Bryanston Invest Investments. Please go ahead. Uh, hello, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, so the first question is on GOG Technologies, uh, where we own 65% stake. So what is the opportunity uh, you see there outside what it does for uh, GOG Financials? And uh, do you have uh, plans to buy out the entire stake from BNP? And uh, how do you think we are placed there given uh, the business from BNP is almost zero now? <coughs> I will, uh, I will, and CJ George here, I will take this question. Um, it is true that most of the business of uh, uh, GIDIT technologies is now uh, coming from GIDIT financial services. We are uh, uh, on the lookout for expanding this business outside the uh, GIDIT. It is also true that the BNP Paribas uh, business that is the a business uh, where we used to export software to uh, the, the European units of BNP Paribas has uh, uh, now stopped. Uh, with regard to your question on whether uh, we are planning to buy back the stake from BNP Paribas, I can only say that uh, often when BNP Paribas uh, approaches us, we will take a view depending on uh, you know the evaluation and depending on the opportunity. So we will be open to the idea of uh, acquiring that stake if uh, the invitator is uh, often when they're ready to, you know, uh, offer us. Okay. And in the meanwhile, uh, how do you think the liquid investments in the company will be utilized? Uh, Sadesh, you could uh, take that question. I will give it to CFO. Uh, to say how the liquid investment as of today of geogic technologies are invested? Uh, no, I'm saying strategically, how do you look to utilize those investments? So we have around, as of, yeah. Sorry. The liquid investments of uh, geogic technologies, actually we have invested them in fixed deposits of banks as of now. And we have the capability to access uh, those funds have something been required for uh, even the requirements of uh, GFSL as well. So, as and when there were uh, uh, you know, requirements in the past, we could uh, get access to these funds um, as we have taken appropriate uh, approvals from the AGMs, AGM and board, etc. All right. All right. And so, from uh, next CD Fire perspective, uh, what is your opinion on commission that we earn on uh, uh, distribution of mutual funds? So at overall level, uh, is it sustainable at current levels of uh, around 90 basis point or you think uh, there is uh, a structure rate can go down? What, what, is, what is your overall sense basis on the discussion that, we, that, that you have with the mutual funds? Uh, uh, as of now, I don't see any discussion which is happening which will contemplate a reduction in the yield. Uh, so I have, uh, we are not forcing any, uh, any reduction in the yield as of now. So our yield has been around 0.85 percentage, 0.86 percentage for uh, for some years now. After the restructuring which happened. Uh, in the AMC scenario, when we moved, when everybody moved to trail income. Correct. So this is more or less sustainable uh, from next to the finance perspective, is what we can say. As of now, we have no reasons to believe otherwise. Sure, sure. All right, I'll come back in the queue. Thank you. Before we take the next question, a reminder to all the participants. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may please press star and one now. We have the next question from the line of Saji John, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. So my question pertains to the, the initiative that we are taking on the steps. And uh, could you please throw some light and outlook on what are the action plans regarding this and also can you please provide the status of uh, Geojit IFSC open in Gujarat, Kip City? Thank you. 
Uh, I will take this question. With regard to steps, this is a financial planning, uh, you know, uh, platform. Uh, we have ambitious plans with regard to this business, but we need to uh, uh, be reminded of the fact that this is a long-term business. This is unlikely to, uh, you know, uh, grow into a big business in the immediate future because it is a fee-based business where we collect only fee and no brokerages, no commissions, so you know how the industry is. So we have currently now five offices. From five offices, uh, qualified financial planners have started giving uh, you know, service to clients, investment advisory service to clients. We prepare financial plans for them. I can only tell you that all those clients who were uh, with us in the first year, uh, almost 100% of the customers have, uh, you know, renewed the service for the second year. And we are also seeing, uh, because of the branch opening also, we are seeing, uh, you know, growth and traction. We have not invested, you know, this is largely being developed an offline business, as an offline business. Due to two, uh, you know, consecutive years of COVID lockdown, we were unable to uh, basically do significant marketing activity for this particular vertical. But we are going ahead. We are having ambitious plans. And we are very confident about the growth of this business. And, and sorry, you have another question? Uh, yes, sir. My question regarding the uh, uh, Geodit IFSC Open in Gujarat. Ah, okay. Okay. So this is a new uh, initiative. We are uh, in the we are in the process of uh, getting uh, licenses. We got one license. We are looking for the other licenses. We wanted to basically use this platform for the uh, NRI clients to begin with, and then of course uh, wherever it is possible to do uh, business uh, through LRS route and uh, subject to the permissions and approval, we wanted to uh, make use of this opportunity for our customers. This is the uh, first step that we are planning. We have uh, people in place at the moment, and uh, in another 15 days' time, uh, we are hopeful of starting operations there. Good to hear from you, sir. I'll join back in the queue, sir. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. You may test. Star and one to ask a question. We have the next question from the line of Pranav Tendulkar from Rare Enterprises. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, sir. Uh, thanks a lot for the opportunity. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, Pranav, go ahead. Yes. Sir, uh, just for uh, just for uh, comparison sake, Angel One is adding, say, 13 lakh uh, uh, customers per quarter. Uh, ICICI Securities is adding for core point five lakh customers, new customers uh, per quarter, and we are around twenty thousand. So, what is our plan to take take this twenty thousand to one lakh, two lakh, three lakh, or five lakh using technology? And, and do we have this plan? Thanks a lot, sir. Uh, uh, now, uh, I will. Uh, 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 answer one part of this question. Uh, number one, we are still not uh, in the space of discount booking. So we have one limitation with regard to attracting customers uh, using the discount booking uh, model. But at the same time, I can very well say that uh, these customers that we are acquiring uh, currently, these are uh, in the same segment of customers that we have been acquiring in the past also, where customer uh, relationship continues for years and years. Mm -hmm. uh, so, and then if you look at uh, the yield from these customers, the yield also is uh, significantly high compared to the industry. I agree uh, with the observation that we are unable to uh, you know, basically acquire customers the way at which uh, uh, some of the discount uh, broker competitors, as well as the bank broker competition are doing. Bank broking uh, uh, space has a different uh, advantage. It's not a level playing ground. And also, I I would like to 
mentioned that most of these clients that we acquire are also through our branch network. These are, uh, you know, long-term relationships and their, uh, uh, you know, uh, revenue per customer as well as the relationship uh, longevity, if we consider, these are all much higher compared to the industry standards. This is what I could say at the moment. Right. Sir, uh, because uh, our yield uh, and the result of competition is coming down on me. So if yield is going to go down, we might as well participate in that because that is going to provide a funnel for uh, cross-selling uh, for uh, other products. Yeah. So, so I yes. mean, how, how to evaluate the two opportunities? Because on one way, there is a large portion of uh, Indian youth which will access all the services and that you pro- probably will go to discount brokerages and that is that is also a funnel for further cross selling so if, uh, and do we can, can we afford to miss that opportunity like if, uh, if i can technology why? make uh, those discount brokerages also the customers also profitable so this is my question how to make that strategic choice uh, I probably, uh, you know, beg to differ with you on one thing. That is, uh, you know, this space of discount broking is uh, currently occupied by a few, one, two, three large players. Mm-hmm. And uh, the, the fourth, fifth, etc. getting into that space, would, uh, for example, if we would uh, try to get into this, it would rather cannibalize uh, uh, you know, our existing business, whereas we have cross-selling uh, based on the relationships. We sell insurance to our paying customers. We sell mutual funds to our customers. We sell PMS to our customers. So our intention is basically to uh, have all the products uh, sold to the families of the customers whom we service. So... There is an opportunity, I agree with you, but that opportunity is today uh, and no longer there for, uh, you know, the, the, or in the sense, any number of players in after us discount booking is concerned. Right. This is our observation on this. We wanted to, you know, we wanted to be in the business of, uh, you know, creating wealth for our customers. For us, a transaction is only a means to an end. But unfaction in itself is not an end for our uh, for our strategy. Right. We consider a trade and transaction, etc., are only means to an end, and the end is uh, finally creating wealth for our customers. Right. Right. Thanks a lot, sir. Thank you, Donna. Thank you. Thank you. A reminder to all the participants: anyone who wishes to ask a question, may please press star and one on their touchstone phone. You may press star in one to ask a question. We have the next question from the line of Anil, an individual investor. Please go ahead. <clears throat> thank you. Uh, uh, thank you for the opportunity. Um, I have a question regarding... Uh, is, is there any possibility that the brokerage rates will eventually raise from the current level for the industry as a whole? If so, how long it will take? If not, what would be our priorities and strategies to counter these new age players? Um, okay, I will, uh, I will uh, take this question. Even today, if we, if we take uh, uh, the yield, uh, particularly the uh, you know delivery yield that is the uh, significant part of our business. The delivery yield, even with this competition, continues to be steady. This is the aspiration that uh, Fabish made uh, in the beginning itself. So we are up. To, we have also seen for some of our products, uh, you know, uh, brokerage rates going up. I cannot make any observation with regard to industry. Uh, from our experience, what we have seen is if we have a product or if we have a service that is convincingly in a position to create wealth for the customers, customers are willing to pay for it. 
so we have tried one or two products and we have induced the uh, uh, you know brokerage rates and we so uh, people uh, you know willingly paying the brokerage rates so what is important is what is the value an intermediary is adding to a customer if there is no value then uh, they will go to discount brokers if there is a value which is convincing and tangible they won't mind paying a higher brokerage this is my observation on this larger question thank you sir so uh, also uh, other yields are uh, one of the highest in the industry and primarily because the mix of the clients and the, the mix of the trading volumes they have in our case uh, 76% of our brokerage income comes from the cash market of which 90% which which means uh, of the total brokerage 70% of the brokerage comes from the delivery business so we are more looking at into the delivery business which which is and like uh, mr george said uh, towards long term wealth creation thank you sir uh, my next question is in terms of uh, in terms of growth through digitization what are the key uh, initiatives and strategies adopted to come compete with the new age firms and what are the desired outcomes uh, you may hope to achieve in short to medium term thank you i will uh, hand over this to mr jones george he will answer this question uh i uh, in terms of for digital initiatives we have uh, now started offering a new uh, line of product called smartfolios i'm sorry uh, i'm sorry to interrupt sir you're sounding too low i would request you to come closer to the oh sorry yeah um what i meant to say is that uh, we have launched smartfolios which is a new line of products uh, again largely focused on the investors at the clients um we have already built in a um of uh, around 265 crores alongside we are also uh, we have also just uh, revamped and relaunched a new mutual funds transaction platform both on uh, android and ios called funds genie um in the coming months we will be doing a complete overhaul of our other um, uh, trading platforms as well as our customer 360 platform called my geo so in the next one year uh, uh, there will there is a vision that we have set and uh, uh, in which there will, there will be a lot of new releases as well as new offerings in terms of smart portfolios thank you thank you for answering my question thank you anyone who wishes to ask a question may please press star and one on their touch tone phone now we have a follow up question from the line of varun bang from brainston investments please go ahead uh thank you again so of uh, perspective uh, how important is branch addition is going to be from uh, from next uh, next year perspective and uh, would our growth be linked to branch expansion or with digitization we can grow business even without uh, opening new branches uh these are uh, two different uh, verticals the way we look at it so branch uh, capability is basically for a uh, building relationships that is enabling us in crossing so what we have seen is uh, the the nearer we are to the customers the deeper the relationship is and we are able to sell new products to those customers of course if the products are good so because of this experience and then our yield is also relatively better so these offices uh which we opened recently 29 offices these are not offices in um, in cities and uh, you know major towns these are offices in semi urban areas in rural tamil nadu and rural kerala where we have we are seeing an opportunity in terms of you know developing new clients developing uh, and introducing investment platforms to people who have not invested in the past in the past so there is a particular opportunity that we are seeing these are small offices uh, we are using for deep penetration in helping people clients to you know create long term wealth so this is the whole idea so i am not saying that branch expansion is the only way to get uh, 
and new client but one expansion from our experience as health that's in costly even if you look at the numbers that we have although it is at, uh, not necessarily very large these cost selling numbers that we are showing these are numbers that uh, comes out of uh, opportunities that we received from relationships okay okay and and uh, so again uh, what is, what is the potential uh, uh, business uh, that that our distribution arm can do uh, basis of the relationships that we have uh, so so distribution business where we have around 80 crores of uh, uh, run rate fy 22 can it become 250 to 300 crores in a couple of years uh, i am not saying uh, that uh, the years maybe 3 years 4 years we are of the view that uh, we should grow uh, this business uh, aggressively so we are uh, aggressively uh, growing our sip book and the mutual fund distribution book um, and this is also in a way uh, helping our customers particularly new, the new customers uh, so this this is the target that you are talking about is uh, uh, you know around that figure is what we have internally fixed but uh, this will not take this will not be done in two years time maybe three to four years time okay got that and, and so uh, we have a lot of cash uh, surplus cash in the balance sheet and our share price seems to be highly undervalued so are we internally contemplating any buyback opportunity at this point in time see at, uh, at, you know at the moment our i don't know whether you noticed at the moment our margin trading book is uh, also going up so we are currently utilizing a significant part of our liquidity for Uh, you know margin trading purpose number one number two because of this new margining rules etc there is uh, capital uh, that is needed uh, currently in the business so this balance sheet is helping us to grow uh, in terms of protecting uh, the current level of business as well as for the uh, growth in business we are of the view that this margin trading book can uh, possibly grow decently in the coming years Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Do you have any further questions, Mr. Pam? I'll come back in the queue. Thank you. Thank you. You may press star and one to ask a question. Is there no further questions, sir? Yes. Yeah, we can. uh then can code suggest if there are no more questions okay sir as there are no further questions from the participants i would now like to hand the conference over to mr satish menon for closing comments thank you everyone for joining this call uh if you have any further questions you can contact the company secretary and we'll be happy to answer them thank you very much have a nice day thank, thank you. you very much thank you thank you On behalf of Geojet Financial Services that concludes this conference thank you for joining us and you may now disconnect your lines